Testing, testing. Make sure this thing is on. Yo, yo, what's up, people? Um, you know, excuse me, I got a little uh wire issue with my mic, so if I get knocked off, don't get mad. I'll be I'll hook it back up. Uh, you know what I mean? Been having a, a crazy week because we've been watching, everybody knows Dan Quinn yesterday committed to the Washington, uh, what the whatever their name is. And um, I don't think that's a bad thing, man. I don't think it's a bad thing due to the fact that, you know, I think we respect what Dan Quinn did here. I'm not one to disrespect going 12 and 5 three times in a row. But um, I do look at some of the uh, faults in the scheme and say, okay, listen, there was some stubbornness that was afoot. And, uh, you know, I think that uh, we, we, we needed a change and we're going to get that. Uh, one of the names that's been passed around a lot lately as of today has been Mike Zimmer. He's not a coordinator that I don't like. I, I don't dislike Zimmer. I like what he did with the guys like Barr, Hendricks. You know what I mean? He was a he was a a, a troublemaker or a thorn in the side of guys like uh, Aaron Rodgers when he was with Green Bay. So, uh, and then we also know him from his days with the Cowboys, where he coached Demarcus Ware. I uh, didn't want to stay here because he didn't want to coach three four under Parcells. Uh, he's a four three, uh, you know, live or die type of guy. Um, I like his double A package. I think John Gruden did a good job of explaining what it looks like. But I like his double A package in the four three, and we're going to take a look at it today. First, we're going to hear uh, John Gruden's breakdown as to what that is, uh, and then you're going to see it on full display. Although in this game in particular, I had to go back to 2016 to see it because I wanted to look at him versus. Mike McCarthy. So I went and looked at him versus Mike McCarthy's Packers in 2016, those same Packers that put us out of the playoffs. So it's a good game to look at, although the Packers win this game. Um, I'm not looking at the score because obviously he had a different offense than what we have. I'm looking at how his defense was deployed and what type of trouble it gave one of the best quarterbacks uh, of this generation. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Um, you know, let me give my shout outs to everybody that's out there, though, you know, but uh like this is going to be an interesting, interesting hiring process. I'm not sure who's going to get the job. I hope it's a, a three, four guy. But if we're going to go with a four, three guy, I would definitely say Mike Zimmer's probably up there at the top of the list with what we have personnel wise versus how he utilized his personnel in Minnesota. I think we have better pass rushers here than he had there. Uh, he was able to still affect the backfield and affect the quarterback using a a very blanketed um, or it looks vanilla anyway. You know, everything looks the same in his package, but you don't know what's what's going to happen. So he gives you the same looks over and over again and then he'll switch it up, uh, you know, about, you know, 20, 30 different ways. And you don't know what you're looking at, no matter how they're lined up. So. I like that aspect of it if you're going to go with a 4-3 guy because of the way he deploys it. I think he runs a little bit more zone than our guys have shown themselves to be capable of. But hiring him this early, maybe he's able to get them in some OTAs and change uh, the way we play zone as a team. Because I think that is also something that held us back. You know, when you're stuck only playing man, it's good to be a great man team, don't get me wrong. But when that's all you can do. Um, then there's definitely, uh, you know, schematic things that you have to limit yourself to. So that's in Dan Quinn's defense. Like you can say, hey, his scheme was kind of vanilla, but when he's not allowed to deploy anything other than man coverage, it gets kind of difficult. Hold on one second, people. Hello? I'm live right now. I mean, you can if you ain't doing that. Well, go do what you're doing. It's all good. Sorry about that. Uh, anyway, back to it. Um, but I, obviously, we're going to look at some uh, some other court coaching candidates. I know someone just said Chris Davis says Zimmer ain't coming. Um, I like, I mean, not Zimmer, Brayboy ain't coming. I like uh, three, four guys better personally with the personnel that we have. But we're going to look at what we can do with the guys that we have under Zimmer's attacking 4-3 screen scheme. And um, I think that if you look at what he historically had, always had two good uh, defensive tackles, 
so you can't run in the middle of the field. He didn't really care for pass rushing defensive tackles. He'd use guys like Osa as a defensive end, really. He liked bigger defensive ends that can stop the run and anchor down on the edge, like D-Law, those guys, and he would take Anthony Barr and make him his chess piece. So Anthony Barr would be lined up in the A-gap. You don't know if he's covering. You don't know if he's blitzing. You know, he's more like a Sam slash middle linebacker that was attacking the line of scrimmage and anything 15 yards back most of the time. And then Hendricks was the will that would cover and clean things up and sometimes blitz as well. So um, with what we have here, you can see how he would use a guy like a Micah Parsons as well. So um, you, just, you can just imagine, you know what I mean, how he would utilize them. But obviously, one thing that I can say about Zimmer that he's done consistently is get the best out of his talent. And so whenever Zimmer has something that can't really be dealt with, whether it's Roy Williams, a Demarcus Ware, a Anthony Barr, a Hendricks, whomever, um, Daniel Hunter, whoever he has, uh, you know, he Harrison Harrison Smith, he'll use them in a way that utilizes or maximizes their talent and potential. So from that aspect, I look at it like a plus having him here. So let's take a look at it without further ado. First, let's look at what John Gruden said about his style. Hopefully they don't flag my video for this, but you know, you never know. What really makes the Vikings special is Mike's Mike Zimmer's double A package. And what he does is he takes his two inside linebackers, Barr and Kendricks, and instead of lining them up in a normal alignment, he puts them in the A-gap between the center and the guard. Then he takes his free safety, Harrison Smith, and he lines him up on the line of scrimmage. Then he takes his nickel corner and he puts him on the line of scrimmage on the strong side. So now they got four defenders on one side of the center and they got four defenders on the other side of the center. It's Mike Zimmer's double A package. He did it in Cincinnati, he's doing it in Minnesota, and he's ripping people. A lot of the times, his two inside linebackers, they act like they're blitzing, but they bluff and they run out of here and they play coverage. The free safety's acting like he's blitzing and he bluffs and he runs and covers the flat. The nickel is acting like he's blitzing and he drops into the flat. Well, the next time you think they're bluffing, they bring them both. Or they bring one and they bring him and they bring four to a side. They got about 25 different things that they can do. I love watching these guys. All right, so you guys get an understanding for what John Gruden displayed as what he calls the double-A package. And the reason they call it that is because they put two linebackers in the A-gap to occupy the center, whether they're blitzing or not. So what that does is, even though you might not have the best pass rushers in Mike Zimmer's scheme, because you can't think of, you know, guys that were like, you know, the best, you know, at their position as far as pass rushing is concerned under his regime, but he might he doesn't need it due to the fact that you're going to get one-on-ones all the time in his scheme, one-on-ones with everyone else from the defensive tackles to the uh, edges due to the fact that he's occupying that A-gap every play almost with linebackers and if you take a Micah Parsons you make him one of five whether you're doing that in a three four or you're doing that in a four three where he's occupying the A and getting a choice to decide whether or not you know if the running back spills out my side I'm covering the flat and covering that running back Lee put that down okay I'm live all right you can't do that put it on the ground please thank you I got my daughter she's it's report card week so you gotta excuse me but uh whether he's you know he gets a choice as to whether or not he wants to cover the flat or he wants to blitz. And that's what Barr, we made what made Barr great. And Barr was a great player for Mike Zimmer. He was a double digit sack guy at times, but also played Sam or middle linebacker, which is crazy because Barr's talent is nowhere near Micah Parsons' talent. So if he can get that out of an Anthony Barr, just, just imagine, and I want you guys to look at this, just imagine what he'll do with a Micah Parsons in this same scenario. And that's if he decides to move him off ball at linebacker. And I think he will due to the fact that the way he likes to cut, stop the run is with real defensive ends that 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 set the edges hard, right? So he probably used a Sam Williams and a D-Law starting at edge with the way he plays, along with a Mozzie and a um, Hankins starting because he traditionally used two one-techs. He never really had a penetrating upfield pass rushing um um defensive tackle unless he was here i think when he had leroy glover when he was here um you know he had a couple guys here that he used that way but 
never really in Minnesota and never in Cincinnati either. He usually had just a stout, you know, physical uh, front four. And then on passing downs, obvious passing downs, he would bring in guys like Daniil Hunter and uh, and let them pass rush, even though Daniil Hunter is also another guy that's a pretty – good size defensive end can stop the run and can pass rush. He never had those quick guys, the Robert Quinns of the world or the Fowlers or those guys that just fire off the ball, but really couldn't anchor down if you were running at them. You know what I'm saying? Micah Parsons either. He never really had those types of guys. He would use a Micah Parsons type of guy like a Anthony Barr, where he's still going to be blitzing quite a bit. You know, he's still pass rushing most of the game or a lot of the game and still getting sacks and getting pressures like crazy. But the multiple, um, ability of an Anthony Barr the fact that he could cover he can play zone pretty well hook the flat and he can blitz he can shed block they used him everywhere and they anchored it so that you had to funnel that entire offense through Anthony Barr which made him great during his time uh with the Minnesota Vikings so and we saw what the difference in scheme was when Anthony Barr came here we didn't think much of him that's because he wasn't a focal point of our defense nor were linebackers in a um, Dan Quinn scheme so Dan Quinn, his for all of his faults, the main fault I fought him for is the safety at linebacker experiment once he got here because I think he kind of forgot who brought him here. You know, he, he stopped dancing with the girl who brought him to the prom, so to speak, and that was linebacker. If you look at K.J. Wright and Bobby Wagner, those are two great linebackers. I mean, maybe not the best in the game. Bobby Wagner was at the time, but they had pretty damn good linebackers. Bruce Irving was a pretty damn good linebacker that they used a lot like we want to use Micah Parsons they made him drop back in coverage they use him as a blister they put Bruce Irving everywhere so to come here and not and act like you don't know how to use a Micah Parsons made very little sense to me and stopping the run was their bread and butter in Seattle and then when you look at the even the the Falcons they had uh Jones Deion Jones and Oloku two good line Oloku still a top 10 linebacker today Jones I think retired but those are two good linebackers. We saw how much hell they gave the Cowboys when they played. So to come here and 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 bring a Keanu Neal and start this linebacker safety hybrid thing that he started here, he got away with it for the first year, and then it started catching up to him because the film doesn't lie, right? And to continue to do it, I think that was the only reason that we're not still playing right now, to be honest. I don't think that the Packers were more talented than the Dallas Cowboys. I don't think the Dallas Cowboys players think that the Packers were more talented than the Dallas Cowboys. But I'll take it a step further. I don't think that the 49ers are more talented depth-wise than the Dallas Cowboys. And I'll prove that to you because when they lost an offensive player or defensive player, when someone wasn't playing, the 49ers struggled quite a bit. They lost. They went on a three-game losing streak as soon as they played us and they, they had an injury to Debo Samuels. Whenever Debo Samuels is not playing, that that offense is static, you know. So when you look at depth wise, both sides of the ball, we had more talent than most of the teams that we lost to this season. Arizona, you can't lie. Arizona is not a more talented team than the Dallas Cowboys. But how does their scheme beat the Cowboys? Their their scheme wasn't even intricate. It was the fact that we were stubborn in spots when it came to the run. And what frustrated me most was the fact that Dan Quinn, being a seasoned coach, understanding how to dial it up. Players even calling them out, Michael Parsons included, saying, hey, I don't I don't set the personnel packages. And I have to say a, a quick apology to him for that, at least, because I have been critical of Michael Parsons and I will always be critical of my, Michael Parsons, just like I am any other player. But to his defense, he doesn't set the personnel. He doesn't decide, hey, coach, I'm at middle linebacker this package. So when you see things working like we saw in the Miami game, hey, that was a great play by Michael Parsons, too, from the middle of the field. And then we go away from that and never do it again. Are you seeing the Buffalo game where we get run on and you never put them at middle? Are you see Evans go in at middle and immediately make a tackle for loss, which we hadn't had all game? And then you're like, well, let's take Evans out too. These things are things that coaches aren't really anchoring in on or paying attention to. And well, Dan Quinn wasn't. And that's a big problem for me. That's where my frustration began uh, with him, you know, because those games are games that we can win because if you said hey we're going to look on the schedule and josh allen's only going to throw the ball 15 times and for less than 100 yards you win that game nine times out of ten you think that's a win you know when you look at the game against miami 
that was a win. That should have been a win. When you look at the game, the first game against the Eagles, you know, that was more offensive. Dak steps out of bounds. We had some struggles with Steel on the line of scrimmage. We had some st- struggles in the Miami game with the, with with um, uh, Chuma on the line of scrimmage. So those are, are moments offensively. And then Hunter fumbles. So those are some moments offensively that you could say, hey, those were still wins even with what we put out on defense. But defensively, we could have – we never – took over a game but we could have with the personnel that we have i'm still arguing with people in my chat people on twitter saying that we don't have a three four package the fact that i watched us play three four and shut down the run almost every time we deployed it is what frustrates me and the reason i'm screaming three four is because no team ever did anything to us on the ground while we were running it so of course i'm going to say three four because that was working if it was four 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 six if we were doing it out of nickel whatever was stopping the run i'm going to say you should continue to do that the fact that we did not do that as if the past was something that we were so afraid of that let me know that there's some stubbornness as far as uh person personnel usage was concerned on dan quinn's part so he does get the heat for that all right but um let's look at it though you know, I, I see people screaming sabotage, sabotage, sabotage. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories. You know how I love them. Uh, I love those. But uh, I I agree that there was something wrong. But uh, let's let's look at Mike Zimmer before we get too far in. There's like 180 of y'all in here. Uh, I also will say YT. I won't say his name because I don't know why they're doing it. But I'm, I've been saying that I'm having more likes and more uh, shares than I'm having views after these lives. So make sure you guys are sharing it. Make sure you guys are hitting the, the uh, sub button if you haven't done it. Make sure you guys are hitting the like button because I'm not sure what's going on with the algorithm, but it's continuously happening where after my lives, I have like 40 views. It's 186 of you on here right now. There'll be like 40 views on this video <laughs> for about two, three days after this video. And I'm not sure why that keeps happening, but let's make sure we're getting the word out and uh, sharing because uh, I don't do this for nothing. You know what I'm saying? But um, let's uh, without further ado, let's look at Mike Zimmer. All right, I'm not going play by play. I'm just showing you because, like I said, this this isn't a he's winning this game. He's not winning. They actually get blown out this game. I'm just looking at alignments, and each time I'm each time we look at an alignment, I want to pre- freeze and show you guys what's going on. Like when they're in their nickel, they go three by three usually. Here you see a four by three, where it's seven and it's seven up at the line of scrimmage, but they use a traditional linebacker here and 52 so they have uh hendrix bar and i forget who 52 is i don't don't hate me for that but um they're they use a traditional base package uh when they're out there so let's just look at this one how they deploy it what he likes to do generally and and i want one thing i want you to pay attention to and we'll go back and look this one more time pay attention to how long quarterbacks have to hold the ball and remember the time frame that this video was taken was 2016, where you had quarterbacks that were true pocket passers that could that had pocket presence. Now you have more quarterbacks that like to run, especially when they don't see something quick after their first couple reads. We have a lot of young quarterbacks that don't have that level of pocket presence. And that helps when it looks when you look at a Mike Zimmer defense, because he's going to frustrate you and make you hold the ball. Because even if you just look at this quick scheme right here, everything's short. Anything in the middle of the field or short is law is clogged up. You know, it's clogged up. Hold on one second. I got Nicholas Dominguez. I love your name, man. You got like a you got like a, a cartel name, man. Can I get a can I get a bird? No, my bad. Uh, well, if I can, just DM me. But <laughs> keep up the good work. Appreciate your insights and knowledge. This channel should be bigger. Subscribe, like, and share. Appreciate that. Twenty bucks, man. Yep. But. I'll say this again. When you look in the middle of the field with Mike Zimmer, most of the stuff near the line of scrimmage, whether he takes away all the easy stuff, man. So if you want to run, you ain't you ain't running. Uh, not easily anyway. Uh, you're not in the middle nor to the edges. If you want to throw the ball short, you better pick correctly. You better pick quick because you don't know who's coming. And he doesn't have a lot of tails in this defense. Uh, if you want to throw the ball, you're going to throw it at the perimeter because he uses both of his safeties in the middle of the field uh, very well. So you're going to throw to the perimeter, and those are tougher throws for young quarterbacks, especially if you have to keep throwing outside the numbers consistently at guys like Trayvon Diggs when he's healthy, at a a, – if we bring him back, I think we should, a Gilly when he's healthy, a a, um, Bland playing his true position in nickel, and Izzy if you use them. He would love this secondary, the guys that we keep. It doesn't matter how many of them we keep. We have so many guys in the secondary that could play multiple looks. Uh, Mike Zimmer would take advantage of all these safeties that we have. 
he won't put them at linebacker, but he will take advantage of their skills. And you'll see that on film here. So pay attention to the fact that he takes away the short and intermediate passes and how often Aaron Rodgers either has to extend the play or throw outside the numbers quick, like he's doing right now to Jordy Nelson. Like this is what Mike Zimmer does well. And this is stuff that Aaron Rodgers had trouble with, but he did well because he's Aaron Rodgers. I don't see a lot of these younger quarterbacks in the league picking apart this defense so easily. That was a good, that was a good um comeback route or, or dig route by Jordy Nelson, you know, and you'll see here, boom, the short stuff is not there for him. He has to come off that and hold that ball and get it out to Jordy you know, as quick as possible. And you're going to continuously see that. That's the trend that I picked up on. You know, the quick stuff like like this, you know, every once in a while you guess correctly, he, you you can hit your guy in the flat, uh, but these linebackers are rallying to it, you know, and and, uh, it, and it works it works quite well, man. I think Williams and uh, that was Williams and, uh, and I forget the guy's name, Joseph. Yeah, Limbell Joseph and, and Williams in the middle of the field, I believe. Uh, those guys right there, you can see in the run game right here. Let's go back to it. Let's look at that again. Let's pause right here. Boom. So this is a cutback, right? When you look front side, front side already, Joseph has it does what Hankins does usually. And th we call it Hankins average for this, right? But this is what he does. He cuts this first step off or that front side off, and now he's kicking it back to his backside contain. You got three for three on the backside, and Joseph has already gotten rid of that center who's who's now stumbling so you got Hendrix who's free to go who has a two-way go so Hendrix can help if this cuts back right and let's watch it right let's watch it boom this this is a a good run fit here boom Hendrix was free to go due to the fact that they had a true nose tackle two true nose tackles in Williams and Joseph who who basically anchor those three uh the guard the center and the um and the uh, right guard. So both the guard, guards and center, they're all occupied. And that gives you one-on-ones on the outside. And if you have D, I think D Law and Williams are better pass rushers than what they have here in uh in um Daniel Hunter and uh forget the kid, the guy's name. And we we had him here too. Don't don't be pissed off at me for forgetting his name. Number 97, you guys know who he is. Uh he played for us, then we got rid of him pretty quick after one year. Um someone say it in the chat, so whoever doesn't know who I'm talking about. Uh, knows who I'm talking about. Boom. Let's watch this again. Okay. This is them occupying that A gap. So look at this line, right? Right now you got Hendricks, you know, at, in the A gap standing there. And then you have uh, um, you have Barr that's off ball a little bit. And so you can tell they're running that triangle defense on the top of the screen and running a triangle. Griffin. Yeah, there you go. Griffin. Uh, and on the bottom of the screen, Everson Griffin. That's what I'm talking about. But and on the bottom of the screen as well. Right. So just watch this. Boom. Post snap, you have to guess quickly and correctly. That's why I say this this frustrates younger quarterbacks because you had a pre snap read. Look at the center right now. You're going to see it from a different view. But look at the center right now. That center is still blocking no one and helping no one because he was occupied by the fact that Hendricks was standing right over him. Right now, Hendricks has now played deep middle. He's running up the scene with with that uh, receiver. But already. That quarterback, uh, well, Aaron Rodgers has to make a decision now. Now, with our corners, we can sit on things a little bit better. You can see they used uh, T. New. We love Terrence Newman when he was here. They used Terrence Newman as their island guy, and they tilted all the coverage opposite side of the field. So if you wanted a one-on-one -on -one throw, you were throwing Terrence Newman's side. So they force you to either throw at Terrence Newman or you're going to throw into the teeth of our, our secondary you know, are you going to throw deep middle where we have two good safeties roaming the field? But Xavier Rhodes and Terrence Newman, they made you throw at those guys, you know, or attack the nickels. Uh, you had uh, Captain Munderland or whatever his name is, um, or is it McKenzie? I'm not sure which guy was 24 on the team. I think it was Munderland. But, yeah, they force you to throw at these corners all day. So watch where Hendricks is right now, right? As soon as you snap the ball, now let's watch the center. This creates one-on-ones. This is why I say Micah Parsons being one of five is what would create that chess piece look that you're looking for with him because you don't know, even when he's standing there, he's occupying the center, whether he's going or dropping back or, or blitzing. It doesn't matter. You still have to acknowledge him. And now with a Micah Parsons versus a Hendricks, Hendricks is not really a pass rusher. So when you have Micah Parsons standing here, not only do you have that center that's that's there one on one, but you have these guards trying to pinch inside so that they can help our running back that stays in to help, which creates even more one on ones for guys like Osa, for guys like Chauncey, Hankins, Mozzie.
D-Law, Williams, Fowler, if he comes back, Fajoko, if he plays. You know what I mean? You have guys that – let me see, Lee. I got you. It's going to the next episode. Don't worry about it. Um, but you have those guys that, that now have one-on-ones outside. So just watch the effect. That center never blocked anybody because he had that pre-snap read. And then when you look underneath here, you have Barr that's dropping and hooked the flat right underneath this slant route. So these are the, – when you're forced to get the ball out that quick, if that corner was sitting, if Rhodes was sitting on this route – where does where does he go with this ball that quick? He has nowhere to go. He would have had nowhere to go quickly with this ball. I think the one of the main takeaways that I didn't like, and I think shout out to um, TP Parsons' his brother for pointing this out on Law. Everybody give Law some love today too. This is his birthday, so when you guys get a chance, go on Twitter and make sure you love bomb the hell out of Law. You know what I'm saying? You know, and uh, tell him happy birthday, man. Uh, he's born on Groundhog's Day too, but. Uh, if y'all like my channel, y'all got to love Law because I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for Law. I said to him earlier today, him being crazy enough to chase his dream made me crazy enough to chase mine, man, because he set the tone and the example. So got a lot of love for him, and uh, I appreciate him more than I could even say because I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing in life right now. And uh, a lot of that has to do to the example that he set both on a football end and even made some connections for me in the box and into things where I'm doing that too. So uh shout out to him man give 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 law the respect he deserves but i'll say this uh, on that podcast that him and uh ray ray did and uh and boss did with uh with uh i forget his name terrell parsons terrence parsons i'm not sure what his name is tp t parsons they talked about the fact that um you you can't really account for the fact that micah parsons is is not a full-fledged pass rusher or linebacker he's a pass rushing linebacker and when you see this, when you see the way that they used, uh, that Zimmer used his uh, his linebackers in Barr and Hendricks, it's it's just very telling. I don't think Zimmer is a three four coach, James, but it's very telling that you know they they uh, they weren't used correctly. But one of the main takeaways that Parsons touched on was the fact that they gave up so much space on the outside. When you have a pass rusher that can win as fast as a Micah Parsons, and you're giving up ten yards of cushion. I said it, you know, so if you're giving up that much cushion, you know, quickly, what's the point of having a pass? We remember, we remember the Eagles game where Michael Parsons was winning in like one second, one second, but it had no, it had no time to get to the quarterback. He could win that fast, but we're not playing press man coverage because we want to play cover one so bad. We don't want to give an extra safety for help. You don't need that safety down in the box on a passing down when you have a guy like Michael Parsons near the line of scrimmage who can win that fast. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think Zimmer will recognize that pretty quick. And he might even help Parsons out by flooding the line of scrimmage the way he is right now so that Micah Parsons can have an even, even easier look because they'll confuse. See here, this rotation? He'll confuse the hell out of your blocking scheme. See, now look right now. Pre-snap, there's so much stuff that just changed pre-snap. You got, you got Harrison Smith out here on the edge. So that, that makes his right tackle have to kick out to respect that. Right. Or you're just saying, hey, we're going to pinch and play inside out because that's how most offensive lines are constituted. You block inside first. But if these inside guys aren't coming now, Harrison Smith is free because even if they could have got out there to block them, they're, they're not going to call that slide. Why? Because you don't slide that protection to a Harrison Smith who's on the edge. See, you're not going to slide that protection to Harrison Smith when you got guys crowding the A-gap because the A-gap is the quickest way to the quarterback. So you look here. Boom. They had to get that ball out fast, and Daniil Hunter drops and covers. So the fact that you – right now, you don't know what the hell Zimmer's doing, and there's a lot of movement going on. Everybody's at the line of scrimmage. Like, look at this. So A-gap, you're confused. What's going on? Who's coming? You know what I mean? Who's coming? Harrison Smith is coming. Daniil Hunter looks like he's, he's, he's going to, right? So boom, watch this. Harrison Smith steps off, but he's still blitzing. See what I'm saying? Still blitzing. Boom. Immediately, they know where the the defense knows where they need to go as far as coverage because they know who's blitzing. So they're gonna they're just gonna occupy that vacated space. This is a very e easy defense for the defenders to learn because everything looks the same. Everything looks the same, but it's not the same. See what I'm saying? So I like that about Mike Zimmer. If you're gonna use a Zimmer, it's it's because of this. This is why you go after him. I got another super chat. Let me see what he says. He said, been waiting on your insight regarding potential de defensive coordinators. We get uh, a, 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 what's it? a retread, I think, a retread guy at, at D.C., Mike Zimmer. I, th I guess that's what you mean, retread. I thought you meant it 
something else. <laughs> I, I didn't want to say that though. But um, yeah, he said we get a retread guy. At, uh, Mike Zimmer would be rock solid because his defense would tech would be technically sound. Keep up the great work. We love uh, with the film. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yes, um, Mike Zimmer definitely has coached uh, at a high level and has kept a sound defense no matter where he's gone. Um, I thought you were going to say the re-re word. I don't want to say it, but I thought that's what you were saying. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got you, man. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Got you. Boom. See here? Now, I just told you guys, pay attention to how long a quarterback has to hold the ball because we have pass rushes here. Now, look at how long he has to hold this football, uh, Aaron Rodgers. Watch this. Boom. Watch this. He has to hold this ball. He has to. Boom. We have a better pass rush than this. He has to scan the field because you have guys like Hendricks and those guys. Hendricks is occupying not only deep middle, but he's also occupying this drag that's coming uh, underneath him. So he has to hit that seam late. And those those types of looks, although Aaron Rodgers is taking advantage of it, as I said, we're in a different NFL today than we were in 2016. These quarterbacks, these younger quarterbacks, the the the, um, uh, the hurts of the world, you know, the fields of the world, those guys – are not standing in there and waiting for these late developing routes. They're going to take off. And against a Mike Zimmer, I think, you know, with this personnel, I think that bodes well for us. You know what I mean? That bodes well for us. You know, here, that was an early developing drag there, you know, off of play action. You know, they snuck one in there. But you could see you could see the uh, the concept. I think this is on uh, uh, – on, um, Munnerlin, whatever his name is, or McKenzie, I think. I don't know if that's McKenzie or Munnerlin uh, at 24. But whoever it is, um, you know, that was on him. He had backside zone. Boom. Yep. But whenever they crowd the line of scrimmage like they do here, you have to get the ball out fast, man. And uh, like I said, I like that about Zimmer. Zimmer makes it so that you have to challenge those corners. And it's funny that even Xavier Rhodes, Rhodes and Barr, Roseanne Barr, <laughs> Rhodes and Anthony Barr uh, were pretty good with Mike Zimmer. They didn't look good here, though. That's because it's a totally different scheme, totally different scheme, you know, but they didn't look good here. And it's because they weren't they weren't used the way they were used in Minnesota, where they were. You were forced to challenge these guys. Look at the line of scrimmage right now. Who's what are they doing? There's no way Aaron Rodgers even can determine what's happening pre snap. It does not matter how smart he is. And how many people he moves in motion. You still, you don't know what's happening until post snap. So this is this is a defense that forces quarterbacks to be hella good at their job. You know, they score here. That's Jordy Nelson. They score here because Aaron Rodgers happens to be that damn good at his job. But just imagine for a moment you're dealing with these younger quarterbacks who don't have the same post snap IQ. That a now pre snap you had six guys in the box. And now he has to hold this ball and determine what's open quick, right? Boom. Look at that. Look at that. Now, that's the score. I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not saying they shut down the Packers. The Packers actually beat them pretty good in this game. But he, did, he didn't have an offense. I put a little Kirk Cousins in here. They didn't have offense. And I'm going to look at Dom Capers' uh, defense as well because I like this 3-4 that they ran. I'm not going to look at it this in this film because I like the defense that they ran. And we have Al Harris, who a lot of people are talking about. Um, so, you know, to get a look at what Capers was doing during Al Harris's uh, regime, you know, Capers played or well, Harris played for Capers, even though he wasn't playing in 2016, he retired in 2011. But uh, he saw this, these packages that you'll see the Packers using. But I'll do that in a different video uh, just to save some time. Here we go. Boom. Here they are with that double A package again. You see, they went in motion. Nobody, nobody followed. So Aaron Rodgers still has no clue as to what's happening until right now boom now they're dropping see what i'm saying that center is still blocking no one now he got the help last but look how long aaron Rodgers has to hold that ball and the only reason he gets open is because again mutterland captain mutterland or mckenzie and I, I gotta look at the back of 24's jersey i don't know who 24 was in 2016 one of you guys know but yeah you can look it up for me if you guys want to you know what i mean but they funneled everything to anthony barr in this defense and the only reason they get open on that last play, I'll show you, even though he held the ball forever, the only reason he gets open on this play, what play is it? Let's see. Where is it? Oh, that's, the, that's that one. Boom. Here. So the only reason he gets open on this play, watch the nickel. 
if 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 he doesn't fall down, if he doesn't fall down here, if that nickel doesn't fall down, if you look at the top of the screen now, they're they're getting good pressure and they're collapsing that pocket. But look at where look at the middle of the field, right? And I'll show you this in a in a Amari Cooper breakdown as well with Zimmer. I'll show you exactly what I mean because I broke down Amari Cooper a couple years ago against the Vikings, and it was the same thing. When you look in the middle of the field, you really have four. It's a it's a box coverage. Right, right now, the only place you can go with this ball is to the perimeter. If you're a quarterback, you can't do the things Jordan Love like to do, like throw across the middle of the field, and you can't throw that drag underneath because Hendricks is playing high low right now. He's not he's not sinking uh, or retreating, and he's not he's not driving, so he's just sitting. So it's bar. So you have to get this ball either over them to hit the tight end that's in the middle of the field, which is you have to sit that ball down be over this over the linebackers and under the safeties. You're not doing that consistently. Or you have to throw outside the numbers. And right now, everybody is blanket coverage. You're not going to throw at Tinu down the bottom of the screen. You're not going to throw at Rose at the top of the screen. You know what I'm saying? And you can't really throw to the slot right now. The only reason that slot is open is because right there, he trips and falls. And Aaron Rodgers sees it because he's staring it down, and he gets this ball out late. That's why it's open. It wasn't like, hey, we schemed it open. It was a mistake by a secondary player. And that's the only way you get big plays against this defense. They don't just give it up. Watch this. Watch this again. Boom. Immediately, these guys drop back in coverage. Aaron Rodgers wants those drags, and he wants that dig. He can't go there. And then even when he changes, like, he's bouncing. This is a takeoff right now from a young quarterback. He has to run. You know what I mean? Aaron Rodgers waits, throws off that back foot, and recognizes the open man late because he's just good at what he does. You know what I'm saying? But the defender fell down on that play. I don't look at that as a, a bad scheme call. That's just, you know, a mechanical error. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Good screen pass. Bar is off ball. He tracks that down. Again, every time you see Bar make a play, just imagine that 55 is a number 11, you know, and, and you'll see and you'll you'll imagine how much better we look, you know, with that. I think we have a better – we have better personnel – than they did. Now this pass, this is a touchdown, right? I want you guys to pay attention to how they have to play. Look at the middle of the field pre-snap. You're not doing anything in the middle of the field pre or post-snap. You have to hit these guys on the outside. When you have corners that 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 are ball hawks the way we have them, we wanted a defense that forces you to throw at our corners. Now we did an okay job with that, except for all of those deep overs. All those deep overs were wide open because we only played cover one. We did not help the middle of the field. So you had corners trying to run across the field to cover the middle of the field and cover the outside. In this defense, you don't have to. You can pretty much play. They pretty much play either um, a, a quarters coverage where they're playing cover four most of the time. If it's zone, you're playing cover four. Sometimes you might get an occasional cover, cover three if those linebackers blitz. But you were getting a lot of cover four, a lot of cover four, a lot of cover two and cover four, right? Very little cover two unless we're in in, in zone. But look at that. That was a back shoulder pass. If you're looking at this as a, a lot of quarterbacks can't make this throw, but if you're looking at this as a quarterback, right, they're impressed, man. They have safety help across the middle of the field. Now, let me show you. Once you snap the ball, boom. So you got that safety playing robber. At the top of the screen, you got Rhodes playing, playing good uh, stat coverage with inside leverage on Jordy. You got at the bottom of the screen, they get that corner's playing good stat coverage through the hip. He's looking through the hip. He's playing pretty well. He's in good position. All these guys are in good position. This is just the perfect back shoulder pass by Aaron Rodgers, who him and him and Adams made this routine while they were there. We we actually got beat by a lot of those too. But that is not an open man. None of these guys are open. That was him throwing a guy open. That's Aaron Rodgers being great. But Guys can't, both quarterbacks can't do this. You know what I'm saying? Not consistently. So, and if you're forcing a guy to do this consistently against a guy like Gilly, against a guy like like a Bland or a Diggs or even a J. Lou or an Izzy, I dare you. Or a Wanye, I dare you. Please do it. You know what I'm saying? I would like it. You know what I, mean? I would like it. And if those guys sink or fail doing that, then you beat us going at our best. And I don't have a problem with that. Here we are. Let's look at this run fit again. That was his touchdown one more time. Force, force Aaron Rodgers to hold the ball longer than he wants to, man. That's it. All right, so this is a run. They're playing uh, four by three because you got Smith in the box. He backs out of the box last. Boom. Let's watch what they do front side. I think, yeah, so right now 
You got Daniil Hunter, who was young at the time. He's he's playing backside contain. Everything else, everything front side is 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 pretty much blocked off. Montgomery is going to put his foot in the ground uh, and then you know cut back. Good cut back here. Good run. Daniil Hunter's there to seal that up, but good run. Not great. They didn't get a big big run, but good run. That was a good one. You give up a couple of those a game. A couple of those a game. Here we are. Let's let's pay attention to the consistency in the uh, pass defense and what's going on here, though. Let's see. Boom. This is another run. Like I said, front side. He has nowhere he can cut because everybody's in position. Nobody's trying to get up field and play hero ball either. Everybody's just doing their job. Like Michael Parsons said, hey, man, I set the edge. And then you see that here. You know, right now they're going to run right at, I think this is Griffith here uh, to the left. They're going to run right at him. Boom. No, that's, I think that's Hunter. Yeah, that's Hunter again. And Hunter did, did a, get, a great job not only setting the edge, but once he set the edge, he has help inside. He, I'm going to show this one more time. He's going to set the edge strong. Boom. Look at that. Edge is set. Can't cut this back because edge is set on the backside. And you have, you have Barr, Hendricks, and Smith in the middle of the field along with both defensive tackles penetrating. He thinks to cut it back right here. See, he wants to cut back. There's nowhere to go. The help is there. And Hunter's doing his job. He can't get outside. He has no choice but to stop his feet and try to turn north to south right now. Boom. And that is what they want. That's what we want. That's what we want right there. That is how you play it. It's very, very basic, very, you know, vanilla looking. But it's just making using the best uh, attributes of your defense and forcing them to, to make the plays that they are designed to make, that they're built to make, man. Boom. Now watch this play. Boom. Let's look at the line of scrimmage. As soon as you snap the ball, now let's watch what Aaron Rodgers has right now. Nothing. Nothing. We force you to hold the ball a little longer. Boom. Look at this. There's nothing you can do right now. He could do right now with this ball. And if we contain, he can't even do this. Now, right now, you see Hendricks. Hendricks decides not to cover Montgomery and to go after Aaron Rodgers, which he does. And Aaron Rodgers finds a little hole there and gets the ball over his head to Montgomery for an incomplete pass. But you get the gist. They force you to throw. They force you to throw. Um, they force you to throw more difficult or make more difficult passes in this in this uh, defensive scheme. Boom. Good attempt, good attempt, but I think that was a good defensive call too. Now on third downs, look at how active they get. Boom. Oh, and this is a punt. I'm sorry. My bad, people. I'm like third down. <laughs> Here we go. That was third down, actually. Here again. Good completion off of a play action. Watch everything you see short. As I said, Zimmer likes to take the easy stuff away and force you to make the more difficult throw here boom they're doing a scissor route at the top of the screen i think this is a dig underneath with a post at the top that safety so they're playing right now they must be playing cover four that corner at the bottom of the screen bends inside and takes uh adams out of the play and so Harrison smith is on adams as well and then they're they're putting pressure on that safety, that that the uh, strong safety that's at the top of the screen, because they know once he crosses this hash, once Jordy Nelson crosses this hash, that corner opposite side can't follow. And you'll see that. See how he lets him go? That corner let go. That's how I know it's not man, even though they were playing sort of like match man, meaning they played zone like it's man. You play man on the guy that's in your zone until he runs out of your zone. Instead of just standing in your zone like you saw us doing in the Packers game. You had guys that are playing zone and saying, oh, this is my zone. I just stand here. No, you have to bend in and make it look like or make it more difficult for a quarterback. So he followed this corner, I mean, this receiver to the hash. Then he turns back around. That's Tinu. He turns back around and waits for just in case there's a rail route or some late developing route in his zone. And that left at the last minute, one-on-one -on -one with the safety at the top. And they take advantage of it. Lee, you got to stop with the sneakers, okay? Um, but right now, Aaron Rodgers has a clean pocket and too much time due to the play action. And this was a good, you know, good play. But you're not going to get this that often with our front four, our front seven, you know, because we can apply more pressure without blitzing, you know, than they can. They they did it. They, they took a shot. This was a good shot. Bought them time with the play action. And they took advantage of it. You know, great play here. Most teams are going to get beat by stuff like that due to the fact that, you know, play actions work when you're running the ball okay, right? Now, this is them in the goal line. Let's see here. Boom. 
again, Aaron Rodgers is forced to hold the football for a very long time, man. He actually kept it this time. Let's watch and see what he was looking at. And this is Aaron Rodgers, right? So let's let's pay attention. What are they running first? Let's figure that out. It looks like they're running. Uh, it looks like the safeties are covering the safeties and the nickel are covering the flat. They're running cover three. So the safety and the nickel are in the flat. Boom. They're, they're, they're running the flat. Both linebackers are hooked to short. The, the 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 deep middle safeties in the middle of the screen in the middle of the field and the both corners are playing third. So the the safeties and the the single high safety and the two corners are playing 33 percent of the field each are thirds what they call thirds coverage. The linebackers are playing the middle hook to flat uh, and anything underneath that. And then the nickel and Harrison Smith are playing the flat and they their job is to ride this if it's a it's a flat route cool but they have to ride that rail up the field as well if they turn that into a rail route or if those receivers turn up field so that see see how they rode that both look at the nickel look at the top of the screen and nickel at 24 they turn that out route into a rail they follow it and harrison smith as well follow that so this is cover three and now aaron Rodgers is like hey i don't have anywhere to go with this football so i gotta go and Hendricks waits because Aaron Rodgers moving outside of the pocket would have opened this tight end up. But Hendricks waits and drives late once once Aaron Rodgers crosses the line of scrimmage and they get nothing out of it. See, boom. Aaron has nowhere to go with this football quick. So he has to hold on to it. Hendricks does a good job of holding him and then he, you know, gets him out of bounds, does what he's supposed to do. All right, let's see what they're running here. Once again, boom. Same concept. They're running cover three again. We'll see what Aaron Rodgers does. Aaron Rodgers has, he's still in the pocket, folks. Look at him. He's still back there, forced to hold the football. Boom. And now he gets pressured, finds Jordy Nelson late. If you give me, if you give me a quarterback that has to hold the ball, most quarterbacks have to hold the ball this long and find an open man. Look at how many progressions. This is a progression right now. Aaron Rodgers is already on his first progression. This is second progression. Okay. That's his third progression. Okay. That's his fourth progression, pump fake, try to open something up. Fifth progression, right now he's looking at Jordy. That's a fifth progression. Jordy's going to come open, boom. So he has to go through five progressions in order to get the ball off. If you give me that consistently, I'll take that from any coordinator. And if you beat that, that's you beat the pass rush. You didn't beat the scheme, in my opinion. You know, you just stay uh, – most quarterbacks are going to sit back there. And I think that to win, if you can force a guy to hold the ball for four or five seconds, that's good. You got time, especially against us, especially against us. I would take that. All right. Boom. Here we go. He's dropping back. He's at his first progression. Gets the ball out. Boom. Out route quick. Forced to throw at the perimeter at your at your safety there. Boom. Run the ball here. Let's see what's going on here. All right. So up front, they're loading the box here, you know, because of this tight wishbone set. Uh, or T, you what do you call it? T bone, whatever you want to call this. Um, because of that set and because of the personnel that they're running with an extra lineman on the field. So they, hey, Dan Quinn, you don't go nickel when you see this, right? They put three traditional linebackers on the field plus T new tight in the box, and those safeties are in there to help. And let's see how they run it. Boom. Griffith penetrates upfield, but you know that he was supposed to do that. Whereas we have guys that'll penetrate the B gap like Griffin Fizz right here, but you'll see nobody spilling into the C, which lets you know that there was no communication and that it wasn't called. When you see DA do that, when you see Micah Parsons do that, meaning jump into the B, or D law, they all do it sometimes. But when you see them jump the B gap the way Griffin Fizz, but you don't see this spillage, you see how they have the defensive tackle spill into the C. You have, uh, Number 52 spilling to the C, and then you have Barr over here spilling to the C, meaning they knew that Griffith was cutting inside. Okay. Now, Griffith has now helped that backside contain as well because now uh, Daniel Hunter and Griffith are backside. You can't cut this back. Okay. Boom. Can't cut that back. All right. Now they got a good seal by that line, by that tight end or that fullback on the edge. That was a good seal block on Barr. That was a great block on Barr. But still, you see everybody spilling over there immediately. Now, let's watch that full speed. Let's watch that full speed. Watch this. There was no hesitation by any of those linebackers. Wing T, yeah, good. Thank you. Boom. There was no hesitation. All three linebackers spilled immediately, and they did that because they knew exactly where Griffith was going. They created a kill zone. But 
Barr was supposed to get outside 22 to force this to be like that. They would create that kill zone that they were looking for uh, in the middle of 22 and uh, and that left tackle. But Barr gets out leverage, which gave him a little bit of room. But they still they still were able to rally. You know what I'm saying? So that was uh, that was beautiful. I like that. Let's watch this right now. Post snap really quick. Boom. Aaron Rodgers gets to the top of uh, the back of his drop. Right now, look in the middle of the field. You got two safeties that are look that are staring Jordy Nelson down in the middle of this field. You got the linebackers, three linebackers, or a linebacker and a nickel back underneath. And then again, Aaron Rodgers can throw this ball outside if he wants to. That's the only place you're going to get single coverage against this defense. Look at that. Now he sits it down. He had to throw this ball on the back shoulder of a uh, – oh, that's my son. I think he wants to go somewhere. Hold on a second. This is birthday weekend. Hey, what's up, son? You ready? Right now? Okay, I got you. King of pressure, right? All right, cool. Hold on, fellas and lady. Let me call a Uber for my son because he's going to the mall for his birthday. Yeah, his birthday is Mar birthday. Well, it's Mar birthday week. You know that. You can go because you're a little foot. You're a big foot. Well, let me see your shoes. Nope. Nope. I can see. I am a big foot. I know. I know. Well, I'm not cheating. <laughs> you are cheating. No, I'm not. Uh -huh. Well, no. Bigfoot, I need you to sit down, okay, Bigfoot? Thank you. All right. Sorry about that, people. I'll be done in one second. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Back. Now, that was a good throw. Just a good tight window throw by Aaron Rodgers. Good adjustment. But look at what he's dealing with and what he's looking at at the snap. He has to throw this ball where he doesn't even want to throw this ball. Look at that window there. Boom. And the only reason they had this is a good scheme by by uh, Mike McCarthy because this double drag splits those linebackers. You see what the effect that is having on Barr and Hendricks. They both covered that drag and that opened up that window in that last second. Aaron Rodgers knew that window was open. They designed that play to spread out those linebackers so they can catch that they hit hit that window on time. On time, boom. Here we go again. Boop. They blitz this the the uh, nickel on this play. Force the ball out of their hands pretty quick. Boom. Here we go. Force the ball out of their hands pretty quick. That was a nickel blitz. I like Bland and J. Lou blitzing, man. We need we didn't do any of that. All right, now look at this. This is that double-A pressure again. No matter what, you're pressured as a center because it, you can't change your call even if you want to. You can't change your call here. All right, look at that. You got Harrison Smith at the line. Now look, that you see Hendricks Bells. And right now you see Barr is just playing spy. Harrison is playing spill, sort of like hook to flat. And then outside, again, you could throw outside right now if you want to, uh, Aaron, if you want. But in the middle of the field, you're pretty. You're forced to hold the ball or you're forced to make an exquisite throw. You know, like you, you got to make a great throw here. Look at this. Boom. Now, what happens? He gets sacked as a result of that. Daniil Hunter got this sack just due to the, the scheme. It wasn't a pass rush. It wasn't great pass rush where he won quickly. It's scheme. Look at this. Scheme. Watch this. Scheme. Boom. They communicate at the last second. Barr looks like he's blitzing, right? So now you got Daniil Hunter on a on a uh, tight end because they had to slide protection because Barr is standing there. Barr is not blitzing. Barr is just standing there. That were, That's what you would get from a Micah Parsons or an Overshawn if they're playing middle linebacker. He's just standing there. Or you get Michael Parsons where Daniil Hunter is. And this is how you create mismatches where you got Michael Parsons or D-Law getting blocked by just a tight end because they have to slide protection to help. And if you're forced to hold that ball the way they are there, look at the effect. Now let's watch this one more time. Let's watch this. Right now, before the sack, 
before the sack, you'll watch how watch the interior line. So all four of those guys, all four of those in the, the right tackle, the to to the left guard. Let's watch how many are occupied by what they just did there, right? So all four of those interior linemen are occupied with three guys, or really two guys, because only one of them is actually blitzing. I mean, one only only two of them are actually coming. One of them isn't. Barr is not blitzing. But that left guard is trying to squeeze so that if Barr does blitz, he doesn't get there. But Barr doesn't move. Barr's still standing there waiting. So now you really got two different some tackles being blocked by four linemen, which created a one-on-one for Griffith on the outside and a one-on-one with a tight end for, for, for Daniel Hunter. This is what happens as a result. So you see that? That's four on two in the middle of the field. And they, those guys are still getting there. Barr's just standing there. So Barr can either blitz. He can spy. If you spill out, he can get his hands up, intercept this. If you try to throw a drag, because you don't know if he's coming. And most guys, most quarterbacks, like you see that drag developing behind him right there. Hendricks is already underneath it. But if Barr sees this, Barr gets his hands up. And this is how you create bang, bang plays. Boom. But it becomes a sack because, only because, Aaron Rodgers sees it too. He sees it late. He knows I can't let this ball go across the middle of the field, even though I want to. I can't. You know what I'm saying? Can't. Boom. Here he is again. He's at the top of his uh at the bottom of his drop. We got two high safety. We're playing two man under. They're playing stack coverage, inside leverage as corners. And then everywhere else, they're playing like spill. When I say spill, it looks like they're all blitzing, but they're spilling if those running backs are tight ends spill out. You abandon the blitz and you cover them. If they stay in, you go and match them. Meaning that's the only time you see you should see your linebackers playing match man, meaning your linebackers running to a block is because that's their man that they're covering. So they'll run and try to destroy that block. And if you can destroy that blocker, put them on the ground or get them off balance, then you could you could go pursue the, the quarterback if you want to. Or you could just stand there and wait for it, either a late developing screen or just cover your guy. Either way, it's a win, no matter what, because you you're, the, the, this defense is designed to force that quarterback to try to throw up the scene because he can't get anything outside. So this stress is this is where a guy like Bland will benefit if he's at nickel because it's forcing the quarterback to try to attack the seams and the seams only because you don't have anything in the middle of the field. Look at that. He has to attack this seam where that, that route is bending in. He can't. You know why he can't? Because he's on the damn ground. Okay? Look at this. Again, let's watch what happens here. Now, you see 96 here. If Micah Parsons was playing outside, I mean, uh, outside linebacker or a defensive end, and you want to bring him in on third downs and have him standing one of three right here in these types of packages, that's fine with me. Now, look at this. As soon as they, they converge, we like to do a lot of stunts. And one uh, the other thing I didn't like about Dan Quinn's scheme is the defensive line had the right to stunt whenever they wanted. I don't like that because if they're choosing wrong times to do it, like in Buffalo, you're going to pay for it because you have guys jumping out of their gaps and getting caught like that. Now, right now, Hendricks is pressing his gap, but he's doing it on a delay because they're sliding protection to the right to try to stop this blitz that's coming to the right, right? Look at this. Now, look at Barr again. Barr, because of his pass rushing prowess, he doesn't have to do anything. You know what he's playing? What I just called spill. He's waiting for either this tight end. So is uh, Hendricks is playing spill as well, but he sees Mercedes Lewis is not Trying, or if, the, if that's Mercedes Lewis, I don't know if that's Cook. That might be Cook. He sees if Cooks is trying. If Cooks tries to spill out to the left, he's waiting for that. But he sees Cooks blocking. He's engaged. Bars playing spill as well. But he sees Montgomery is not engaged. He could be trying to develop a late developing set, a, a screen like right here. So Bars looking for that. See that? See see how Bar comes off of that blocker, and now is playing the line. I mean the 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 uh, running back because he was waiting for that. And you see how Hendricks just went. And, bl and blitz, he blitz because his man that he's guarding is blocking. So he's free to go. He's free to go. Boom. And he gets a sack because of it. You know what I'm saying? That's an easy, easy read. And they have to punt because of that. That's an easy read, easy read for those uh, linebackers. And you have Micah Parsons playing linebacker in that type of scheme. And he gets to he gets to decide what he wants to do based off the running back's alignment. Uh, man, he's going to take advantage of that all day. Here we go. Boom. Blit now we got now we got a bar blitzing. And look, he's forced to get rid of this ball. Let's see what happens. Why he can get rid of the ball so fast. Let's watch what happens at the top of the screen with Cooks. But watch, watch the bottom of the screen first. So Barr, they show a late developing blitz. They're playing off ball at first. Everybody. Smith is off ball. All these guys are off ball, but you don't know what they're doing. 
they're, they don't you don't know what they're doing right now you don't know boom right now you figure it out bang harrison smith is coming bar is coming you can't got nothing quick in the middle of the field you can't go to jordy nelson quickly just off the alignment of Rhodes, because Rhodes is playing inside leverage he's he can drive inside anytime he wants so you can't throw a slant you can't throw a fade because he has enough time for that fade to get his hips turned around 29 does so you have to now he's forced to throw to the top of the screen but aaron Rodgers recognized that right now he knows boom i at the bottom of the screen they're playing that pyramid coverage it's a kill zone in the middle of that you can't throw in there and you got to throw outside quick he gets off of that fast right look at that he read that that fast and now he starts to float away from the blitz and throw away from the blitz right now and he sees that nickel is just too far off okay they try to disguise it but that nickel actually must have caused something wrong because they ran that cell that was a cell route you know where you see that corner at the top of the screen is doing what he's supposed to do the nickel double teams the seam when he's really supposed to flow underneath this and cover that he doesn't but aaron Rodgers picks that up he finds the open man that fast that's pretty good that's 81 that's not cooks either boom let's watch this again now let's watch this real time from aaron Rodgers' perspective let's watch this boom bam so now you got right now Barr and joseph has won have won you know they have won you know they've won that was good that was good pressure but good recognition by aaron Rodgers. again that's aaron Rodgers. he took advantage of that but i like the scheme i just don't like what that nickel did on that play but that's something you have to coach up and i think you know zimmer is good at boom here they are running a quick little draw play. Draw play. There's nothing here. Let's watch what happens. Boom. Nothing there on that draw. Here's that double A. They showed double A, backed off. Let's see what they're doing. Whenever they get in the red zone, too, watch how much pressure zimmer you know brings boom again where can you throw the ball against these guys quickly when you when you snap the ball you have nothing in the middle of the field most of the time nothing in the middle of the field most of the time you have to throw the ball to the outside which is good for us because we have corners that are ball hawks they didn't have corners that were like ball hawks over there. they had good man covered corners are good guys that could play in phase and and cover you right they 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 could cover but they weren't i mean out of phase i'm sorry they can cover but they weren't really looking back at the quarterback and uh looking for the ball as often as we do look at this here boom they triple team that that three tech that stand up three tech you know you see now they're in rogers recognizes jordy nelson went into the outside because they were playing inside leverage and that was the only place he can go with that football good route by jordy hold on lee boom right now good in, that in breaking route by adams at the bottom of the screen there's nothing there that in breaking route by 81 doesn't look like there's anything there rogers is still holding this football he's at the top of his drop he has nowhere to go with this ball yet he waits he throws it out the back of the end zone look at this boom nowhere to go with this ball nowhere to go with this ball that's you get rogers to go through three any quarterback you get him to go through three progressions you did your job you if, if that happens you're supposed to get a coverage sack off of that. When you don't, it's not the fault of the secondary. The secondary did their job. Even if he were to complete that pass, the secondary did his job. That quarterback had to hold the ball for, for three progressions, which is really like four seconds because you got a second to get the ball in a shotgun. And you got another second for your first progression. And once you lift that foot, you get to your second progression. So that's one, two, three, four, four and a half seconds, somewhere in there. And remember, we like to live beneath the 2.3. So I know Aaron Rodgers was one of those same type of quarterbacks because that came here with Mike McCarthy, and I think it's the, it was the same for Aaron Rodgers. They want to get the ball out fast, and he couldn't. He had to hold that ball and go through progressions. Look here. So you got Harrison Smith blitzing. Aaron Rodgers already has his back away from the uh, coverage. He has to run out. He has to outrun that leverage there. That was just bad contain. Bad contain led to a touchdown. Bad contain. But – good scheme bad contain i don't think griffith griffith started doing that when he came here so we saw that see griffith flattens out he doesn't need to flatten out you know he needs to go upfield he doesn't need to come down the line that way because you already see uh you already see that a hendrix is already there if griffith just stays home he gets himself an easy sack easy sack but because he gets too aggressive too greedy there 
he gives up a touchdown. We saw a lot of that when he came here, so it's not a big surprise for me. Uh, that was on Griffith, though. He knows it. That's why he clapped. That was his fault. He he, he gave up a sack. I mean, he missed a sack because of his aggression. All right, let's look here. Boom. All right, when they see they see 12 personnel or they see fullback, all right, you guys are in tight. Look at what you see at the line of scrimmage. You don't see no damn nickel. You know what I'm saying? They, well, it is nickel, actually, but they got, like, two safeties in the box. Let's see how they play it. Boom. Boom. All right, you got Rhodes outside contain, forcing this cutback. Look at the teeth. Backside contain is there. Griffith is there. He only can turn north to south with this and wait, and that's what he does. And he runs right into who he's supposed to run into, your linebackers, because you funnel you funnel uh, uh, all your traffic to the middle of the field. Boom. Here we go again. At the top of his drop, where does he have to go with this ball? There's two high safeties. You know, you have uh, Jordy Nelson that's kind of uh, getting uh, trail techniqued, and then everyone else is inside leverage, right? But they have a safety over the top that they're funneling those routes to. Boom. He still has to wait. You got a late developing out route that's taking place right now. Aaron sees it, steps into it, but he has to hold that ball so long that Hendricks is able to cover that, right? That's an incompletion. But look at how long he has to hold the ball here. Again, boom. Play action, still holding that ball, still holding that ball. They got max protecting because you got tight, two tight ends in blocking. It's two tight ends in blocking against a four-man rush. And that's because Zimmer, you don't know when he's coming. So Zimmer still has seven back to guard this, even though they just play action them, right? Why you think that is? Because he, you don't know when he's coming or going. See what I'm saying? So he had two they, – they, that's a win for the defense because you kept two – uh, receivers out of those routes you know so now he had a three-man route he had two receivers that weren't in on those routes because they had to stay in to protect nobody there was nobody blitzing but they didn't know that you know what i'm saying boom now it looks like they're blitzing but they're just standing there at the line of scrimmage see that and again you got outside leverage this time with safety help inside jordy nelson again getting that trail technique so when i say trail technique that means the corner is playing underneath the route right in the jet stream of the receiver Jordy Nelson has a high low, high low coverage right now at the bottom of the screen. The only place that he can go with this ball is that uh, dig that's happening at the top of the screen. Boom. But he's already on the ground by the time that late developing route develops. There's nowhere to go short, and I'm going to show you why. Nothing quick. We'd be like, well, where the check down? They can't, you, there is no check down when those guys have to block. You see now Griffith's being blocked by a tight end. Now that's Hendricks' man, right? Hendricks just standing there. You know why Barr is able to stand at the opposite side of the screen? Because Barr's covering uh, McKin uh, Montgomery, 88. Where's 88? He's still in the backfield. Hold on, Lee. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. All right, he's still in the backfield. We going, we leaving for this. We going to Starbucks after this. I got you. But um, you see Barr, I mean, M M M Montgomery's still in the backfield. He hasn't gotten out yet. Now Barr is going to cover him. That's what I call spill. So when you see spill, spill creates sacks too because a running quarterback He's automatically spied due to the fact that those guys are just waiting for their those those. I mean, not a running back. The quarterback is automatically spied, and so is the running back and the tight end because they're just waiting for their man to release, and they haven't released yet. Boom. So now Hendricks gets another sack where he's not even blitzing. That wasn't a blitz for Hendricks. That wasn't a blitz. He's covering eighty-two, but watch what eighty-two has to do with Griffin because they slide prote protection opposite side. Look, they're sliding the entire line away from. Griffith, right? You see that? Everybody, all four of those guys are over here. But look at how many people are actually blitzing. There's only two guys over there. So again, Zimmer wins. It gets four on two. You got four, five on two because you have Montgomery in there to help protect. You got four on two over here. So you got two guys free in Barr and Hendricks. And then you widen that out with Griffith and Hendricks is just watching. And that tight end stays with it. So once he sees that that tight end stays with it, he sees a lane, he's going. He went right at it. Although Daniil Hunter won on his one-on-one -on -one and got the sack first, Hendricks would have got there too. See what I'm saying? So that's what – this is Zimmer's scheme. This is what it's designed to do. You know, if he actually comes here, it's great. Boom. Let's see. He gets the ball out quick. Smoke screen. Gets nothing. Gets nothing because they're playing press, man. Boom. Everybody's near the line of scrimmage. You're not running on Zimmer. You're not running on him consistently. One thing he always had good over there in Minnesota or anywhere was good run defense. Always. He forces you to do the one thing 
that's the most difficult thing to do on the field, which is throw outside the numbers all day long, you know, with help inside. You're not going to get anything in the middle of the field. You're not going to get a lot short. You're going to have to either screen, and even in those screen passes, you see how they play, they use their linebackers. So the way they use their linebackers patiently, you're not going to get a lot of screens. You know what I'm saying? You only can throw outside, and those guys have help outside so they can be more aggressive than our corners could be, and we have pretty aggressive corners. See you see that slot just got beat, but look, he has inside help right now, and he's being faced off by Barr. So Barr, uh, uh, McKenzie or whoever he is, Munnerlin or McKenzie, 24, is playing outside leverage, right? And he's funneling traffic inside to Barr. Barr is right there. Hold on again, people. Family first. Hello? Yeah, you can. Whatever you give me is cool. I don't care. Give me a couple. I don't care. All right. Boom. All right, so he let that go. It looked like he got beat. He didn't. Guess who's still holding the ball? You you think that you think that our defensive line with this much time could get there? Maybe. Just maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know a lot, you know. There goes there goes uh, Aaron Rodgers buying more time and now he sets up again. That's a lot of time for a quarterback to have to hold the football. Look at that. Gets the ball off late. Good throw to Jordy, but there was nothing there. Because why? Boom. Off that play action, you got those guys trying to now. There, there's so much chaos at the line of scrimmage, too. He can't get this check down. There's no check down for him quick. He could hit 32 right there if he wants, but he elects. Hey, he knows that's not going to go anywhere. He elects to wait and try to get uh, Jordy Nelson, which is a good throw. Just late. Late. What's up? Stop the, stop the cat media. What's good? Boom. There's a blitz. Forced to get the ball out quick. There's nothing. And watch why there's nothing. They know. They know where he has to go. Oh, damn. I messed up here. Let me see. I went too far back there, my bad, people. I don't even know if this is the play. I think we saw this one before, right? Yeah, I think we saw that one too. Did we? Let me see what this play was. All right, I might be missing some plays. I don't care. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Okay, I got. I don't remember what's going on. I know where we are now, boom. All right, here's that play. Hey, I'm good, man. I got right back to it. Oh, um, wait for this next play. We saw this already. All right, now look at this. This is that double A pressure again, right? You have Barr that's lined up because of the alignment. Barr is lined up on Montgomery, who is 88 in the backfield. You see Griffith is spread out wide because they have Cooks this tight end out here. Look at their 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 splits. So Griffith, instead of coming in here and lining up right off of 69 and sort of like that five tech, he's all the way like wide nine, right? Why? Because he wants to one, if they decide to run this way, he wants to get a piece of that tight end so that tight end can't get in behind him and crack back. Put that down, Lou. Come on. Get back on your tablet. Boom. So here we go. So this is at the snap. Bar actually blitzed. Bar actually blitzed. And Hendricks knows Bar is blitzing. Let me get back to that play one more time. So Barr is actually going to blitz here, but can you tell Barr is blitzing? Barr looks like he's covering, right? Hendricks looks like he's blitzing. Hendricks knows I have to sprint to this flat because Barr is coming, right? So boom, watch this. Shit, I did it again. I cursed Lee. My bad, Lee. Yeah. I did. I said something bad. Yeah. Boom, my bad. Don't tell mom. <laughs> I owe you a dollar. No. <laughs> I know. You can tell her. I don't care. All right. All right. Boom. There we go again. Aaron Rodgers forced to hold the ball and throw the ball outside the numbers. Boom. Watch this here. 
Aaron doesn't know what's about to happen here. They get there with four, but look at look at the look at the line of scrimmage again, right? You got five guys in there, six guys in there blocking, and those linebackers have nobody to cover because they created so much chaos. And Aaron Rodgers has to get that ball off late, throw it away because there's nothing, and uh, they got upfield a gap penetration early. Now, right now, off the line of scrimmage, Harrison and those guys had an inside out uh, double team. They were playing bracket coverage on the on the nickel. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you see them sitting on that route. You know, at the top of the screen, that's the only, where we, only place you can go with the ball. But look where Hendricks is. Look where those guys are. They're in position to cover this. Beautiful throw, beautiful play. Hendricks, Hendricks. That, I mean, Hendricks was on Jordy on this play, but it wasn't – this ain't a play that uh, you want to you wanna have to make over and over again if you're a quarterback. Look at Hendricks. So right now, Hendricks knows, okay, you know, we're blitzing. It ain't not even blitzing. But he knows he has to sit on Jordy. He's, he's underneath Jordy right here. Boom. He drives on Jordy's hip right there. Boom. <sighs> Beautiful. That could have been an interception. It was a great throw by Aaron Rodgers, but could have been an interception. Let's watch this from this angle. Watch this. So they're, they're now showing that double A pressure, but they, they come out of it quick because of where Jordy is. And Hendricks wouldn't have had time to get to that. But look at that. If you got to do that all day, I'll take that. <laughs> you got to do that all day to beat me? I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Those are tight windows right now. Now, bar is, bar is blitzing. But look at what you have. Hendricks is playing uh, inside uh, the middle of the field. You got the bottom of the screen. They're in press coverage. You know what I mean? Deep middle. They have safety deep middle. You got Harrison Smith in the scene watching both those scene routes develop. He's going to choose what he wants to drive on. And right now, you got the middle of the field kind of open. Aaron sees it. Boom. He throws it late. Good throw. But look at this pressure. They showed it a little too early. Aaron makes them show it. That was just good quarterbacking. Makes them show it. Boom. They block it pretty well. And uh, he makes a good throw. Lee, come on. Come on, Lee. Don't make me tell you that. Same thing, though. Come on. You know that already. You're not running the ball. You're not running the ball. Look at this. Now they got a they got a off uh you know they got an off uh alignment right now. So the alignment is off due to the fact that they're shifted the opposite side right now. So it looks like you want to run this ball to the left, right? And that's what they do. But they already know that they, they're shifted opposite side. So they basically forced you to run into their anchor who was anchoring on that play was Griffith. You know what I mean? And he had help flooding from the opposite side. Boom. Here we go. <laughs> Troy said, be careful. Okoye could talk you into anything. I was a salesman for 20 years, so I am pretty good at that. I'm like the Wolf of I, I was watching Wolf of Wall Street last night. I'm like, yo, shout out to anybody who know me from my brand.com days. Yeah, we used to get wild. We used to go get drunk every Friday and make money, man. But uh, we were selling our asses off back then, man. I'm, I'm a pretty damn good salesman. I was, I was pretty good. So you're right about that. But I ain't got to sell you on this one. It don't look good to me. Boom. Nowhere to go with that ball, and they funnel everything right at bar. Yeah, this is the, the Vikings with Hendricks at linebacker. Boom. I don't know what they did on this play. The middle of the field is wide open. But Aaron Rodgers still didn't have time to get nothing there, though. Boom. Jalen Smith was good if you would have used him right. They didn't use Jalen right. Jalen's still playing for a reason. Other teams going – why Why you think all these other teams want this one-legged guy, <laughs> one-legged free agent who, who, you know, according to Cowboys fans, should be out the league. But but they, but they we kept the guy with no neck, you know, in LVE who can't play, and we went and drafted another one in Clark. So look at this right now. Barr is beating the hell out of Montgomery. Boom. Oh, my God. Beats the hell out of Montgomery. That's what That would be Micah Parsons if he's playing middle there and, and that running back decides to stay in there and block him. Just imagine there. And there's Griffith again messing up a sack because he's too greedy. He's too greedy. They say Zimmer was washed. Well, Zimmer was washed as a what? As a head coach? Yeah. Not as a defensive coordinator. Boom. Boom. There he is holding the ball again. This time he gets the ball off. 
good throw, but uh, because he tried to get that over those guys, but you could see the effect once again. Let's see this here. Boom. Here we go. Here we go. Receiver. Oh, that was a good, great throw. How many quarterbacks can make that throw, though? That was a that was a great throw. So if, if Zimmer's watched, let me ask y'all, why was um why was uh um Quinn not washed when he came here? Why was that? Quinn looked pretty washed in Atlanta. But he came here, did pretty good. So boom. Look at that. As safety blitz, they brought everybody after him. Yeah, nowhere he can go with this ball. Nowhere. This is what I like. If you could, if you could do this to Aaron Rodgers, you could do this to anybody. But look at this. Aaron Rodgers is gonna read this. He doesn't read any pressure. There's no pressure. See, no pressure. Last minute. Boom. By the time he hikes the ball, there's no time to slide protection anywhere else. But look at it. This is a zero coverage. Everybody's blitzing. Well, everybody's coming in, right? So right now, you still got how you got zero coverage with safety help. We run zero coverage. There's no safety out there. It's some bullshit. But uh, we got safety help. Excuse my French. I'm mess messing up my YouTube algorithm once again. Those corners are playing stat coverage, except for in the middle of the field where he knows he has help. He's playing trail. And look at that. Boom. He runs that runs right into his help. And those corners that, on the outside, they're playing over the top where they can see Aaron Rodgers and the ball. Aaron Rodgers has no time. He has to come back out, reset, get rid of that ball in completion due to a sneaky pressure. All right, so this is a sneaky pressure look. Because right now, Aaron is setting his line of scrimmage up. He's telling guys, hey, this is what I want you to do. Once he does that, now you see that safety blitz. You see Hendricks blitz. And uh, you see Barr play a match man because he's watching Montgomery. But you see Montgomery stays in, Barr stays in. Barr stays and plays spy because of that, right? And now when Aaron spills out, Barr's right there, boom. And so is that safety. Nothing. Nothing. You're right, soul goddess. Diggs might not be himself in 2025. But if you if you if you play like this, if you if you give him this type of help, he don't need to be so he could be as fast as Gilly was this year and still do some things for you. Here go another zero coverage. But this time a safety is playing in the middle of the field. They're dare Harrison Smith right now is daring you. He knows I don't have no help. He knows the only place place that Aaron can throw with this football is up the seam of the middle of the field. But he's on it. He don't have to cover before a second because he's trusting that that pressure going to get there. That's not even Harrison. I think that's bullet. I don't know who that 34 is. But watch this. He knows I don't have no help because Harrison Smith is blitzing. But he all he has to do is get over the top of that 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 route. He's there, and right now there's nothing that uh, Aaron Rodgers can do other than get out of there because they got there so fast. They brought everybody. They brought eight guys on that blitz. That was a zero coverage. We used to in a four state. That was on third down too. So they forced a field goal there. Boom. We used to do that too when Roy Williams was here and Darren Wilson. Boom. You see that everybody's discipline. Everybody's discipline versus the run. Let's watch this again. Watch this. Boom. Front side, you got Griffith gets that out, gets outside like he's supposed to. But look inside, you got all his help. You got 52 there. You got Hendricks inside. You got both tackles there. And then you got on the back side, you got Barr just waiting. Barr just waiting. Look at Barr. Barr is a patient, smart guy. And he knows the way Zimmer runs his defense, everything going to come to you anyway. You ain't got to play hero ball. Just chill. Everything going to come to you anyway. Boom. So Aaron has to do things like this to beat the – this is what you have to do against um, Vangio as well, Lee. Aaron has to do things like this in order to win, meaning you got to throw impressive throws to the outside. There's nothing else you can do. Like, look at this. Nowhere else you can go with the ball. This ain't open. That's good coverage. Just great coverage, great throw. You know, that, ain't, that wasn't open. You know what I mean? I wasn't open. Look at this. We almost to the end of our film, people. I know this is a long session, but I had to call this stuff out. Even that, that, those type of looks, let's look at this one more time. Look at the top of the screen where Aaron goes with this football. Let's look at the, when he gets to the top of his drop. So, see, he knows Hendricks might be coming. Hendricks doesn't come. Boom. All right, boom. He can't go to the middle of this field, right? And on the outside, you see that? With those types of routes, with those little comeback routes, th that type of stuff, digs and uh, – Bland, they love that. So if they're able to sit on those routes like that, I want you throwing that digs and bland consistently to the outside as much as you've seen Aaron Rodgers have to throw to the outside in this game. You don't see a lot of stuff sitting down in the middle of the field. You don't see a lot of easy completions. You see a lot of blanket coverage and tight window throws and back shoulder throws and great throws by Aaron Rodgers.
but you don't see a bunch of open windows. See that? Boom, right here. You can get rid of that ball quickly. But look at that. We got safety. We got everybody rallying to the ball right near the line of scrimmage. There goes Barr again. You know, there goes that double A pressure once again. But neither one of these guys are blitzing. Hendricks nor Barr. Maybe Hendricks is coming. Hendricks actually is coming. Boom. And Roger sees that. Barr knows where the ball is going because Barr is like, I know where the pressure is coming from. And he rallies to the ball. And that was funneled right to him. Here we go again. Let's see what we're doing here. See the personnel? All right. So they're in like, what's that? They're in 12 personnel. Boom. Actually, 22 because you got two two backs, two tight ends. So they're in 22 personnel. Sorry. Boom. Boom. Aaron's holding the hell out that football and has to wait. Look at this. Boom. Nowhere to go running that ball. I mean, Diggs also, you got to realize, Diggs has more time than most guys have with a ACL tear. I see you guys talking about it. Diggs got hurt early in the season, which is good for him because he's probably back to running now. So he can get all the jitters out by the beginning of the training camp. Whereas some guys get hurt late in the season. So they, by the time they're running, they're past the OTAs. You know what I mean? By the time they're able to run. And then in training camp, they're scared to get hurt again. So they're not running. He can get through all that before we even get to training camp. So I, I hope that they don't even bother with Diggs in the ATAs. They let him just work on stabilization and strength and conditioning for that leg so that he feels comfortable come the start of the season. Even if he doesn't start in the beginning of the season, you bring him in week four. I think good Diggs and Overshawn will be better than you saw guys like Cox or Gallup with that same injury because those guys got hurt later in the season. Even Terrence still, they got hurt later in the season. So that actually bodes well for Diggs, believe it or not. Boom. Look at those linebackers doing linebacker shit, man. I just get excited when I see linebackers do regular linebacker shit. You know why? Because we ain't seen this in a month of Sundays, man. And literally, month of Sundays. <laughs> Let's look at this. Boom. All those linebackers, you could tell they're trained to, and they know what they're keying on because they trust that this those four guys in front of them are going to do their damn job. And they see they got a safety on the backside for backside help, right? Look, 34 is on the backside. Oh, no, he actually bells out. 52 is playing well. But look at look at the Sam. So you have uh, – a Sam is basically the, your, your anchor or your hammer on this defense. That would be bar in this play, right? A 52 is playing well. Hendricks is playing middle, right? Watch 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 what uh, Barr does. So Barr gets outside right now. He sees that – uh, Harrison Smith has outside contain, so he's not worried about trying to overrun this. Right now, he's just going to shade the outside shoulder of that pulling guard or tackle, whoever that is, and he's going to hit him. Boom. That's his, that's the only job. That's all he got to do. Now, right now, he has a window because of that impact to either pass this back to Hendricks or make this tackle. Look at this. But both of them make the tackle. Beautiful linebacker play from the linebackers there. Boom. That's what I like to see. Here. Because they, they caught those guys in man, they got the alignment they were looking for. They're trying to attack Hendricks on that rail route. Hendricks covers it well. Boom. He's underneath that. I like Michael Parsons in situations like that, to be honest with you. I do. I like you having to throw at a guy who can run a 4-3 every once in a while, especially when you've seen him make plays like this against actual receivers. I don't know why you wouldn't do that, Dan Quinn, ever. You know what I mean? Force that sometimes. Show him that you can't just play with Michael Parsons in any way you want. Now, they're flat to the line of scrimmage. Uh, good. They they got them all size on this one. Let's see this next one. Same same formation. They back off this time. Boom. Catches the scene. Great route. Great throw. I liked it. Let's see this. He put this right on the back, hit back shoulder. Good throw. You know, this is going to happen sometimes right there. Boom. Great throw. But that was a tight window, but a good touchdown. I think that's all of it. All right, so that's all the film for my for, for Zimmer. That's all the film from that game. The Packers won. I wanted to show you the reason I picked that game is because Mike McCarthy had to adjust in that game to Mike Zimmer's scheme, and they saw a lot of each other. So it's also letting you know how far back they go. So Mike McCarthy may go with Ron Rivera. 
uh, if he has any choice. He may go with Zimmer as well because he understands Zimmer's scheme very well. And you can see how much trouble, although Aaron Rodgers, having that Aaron Rodgers effect made Zimmer look normal in that game. Uh, you see how hard it is when you – the score doesn't tell how much work had to be done to beat that defense the way he did. I mean, because a lot of those throws, other than that last window, he had a little window on that one. Most of those throws, he had nothing in the middle of the field available early. And the Minnesota Vikings, they haven't had a top-tier pass rusher since Jared Allen, I think, at that time. I wouldn't say Griffith was a top-tier guy. He was a guy that got a lot of sacks because of Zimmer's scheme. You know, same thing with Daniil Hunter. He got a lot of sacks because of the scheme, you know, whereas we have pass rushers. We have guys like Sam Williams who can pass rush very well and also can play physical versus the run uh, and who I think these guys will respect. I don't want to Mike a, a, a Dan Quinn because although Dan Quinn is a good teacher, he's a player's coach. They like him. I don't think Dan Quinn was mean enough. I mean that. reason I say that is because you have guys just saying what they want. You have guys not being pulled when they're doing dumb shit like getting penalties over and over again, Sam Williams. You know, you have these guys, you know, have guys who are playing right, like who have the right mentality when they're on the field, like an Evans, who they don't play. You have guys like Mike, Michael Parsons, who plays off ball and makes hella plays, who they don't play there. You know what I mean? So I don't think Dan Quinn was making things happen as much as I want to believe. And it's not a kick a man while he's down type of thing. I just think he was too nice. I didn't get the personality. I got the IQ. When he was standing at the podium and talking, he has the IQ, but the personality's not there. Joe Witt has that personality I like. You know what I mean? Al Harris has that personality I like. Zimmer is an asshole. He has that personality I like. And players know where they stand with him, and they also know where they should be standing because his defense is such where you understand what you're supposed to be doing because you're getting a similar look, whether you're 4-3 or nickel you're getting a similar scheme it's just they might call a different variation of it where you're off ball here you might be crowding the a gap there but you're spilling on this side so you know what you're doing it's very simple for defense to learn uh you had roy williams had his best years under zimmer it's funny that roy williams we said he couldn't cover as soon as zimmer left because we had a new scheme he put took roy williams our best safety in years and put him 20 yards off the ball after zimmer left and Roy Williams suddenly was trash after five Pro Bowls. He's trash, right? But Zimmer leaves. He goes to Cincinnati. Roy Williams does with Zimmer and gets right back to it. Nobody remembers that year. Roy Williams knocked out no Sean Moreno when he was over there with Zimmer. He knocked out a bunch of uh, uh, Finley. He, he knocked out a bunch of Packers players. He knocked out Finley, Jermichael Finley. I think he knocked him out. He was just knocking guys out, killing guys again. And I'm like, that's Roy Williams of old. Man, oh, Roy Williams of old. I remember he hit No Sean Moreno one time. You can Google it. He hit No Mo Sean Moreno coming around the side. Let me see if I can find that play. He hits No Sean Moreno coming around the, the sideline. And when he hit him, man, No Sean gets up. You knew that. Like in today's NFL, that's concussion protocol every time. You're not, you're not getting back in those games, bro. Hold on a second. Let me try to find it. I might be able to find it. I remember those hits. But uh, the film for the NFL don't go back that far. Let me see, Roy Williams. No, Sean. Let me see if that hit is here. Oh, yes, it is. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, let me share the screen real quick. It's here. I love this hit. Hold on. Share screen, Roy Williams. No, Sean. Share. Let me get over there. Where is it? 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 Damn it. All right, Lee. My bad. I did it again. Okay. Oops. I did it again. I cursed it. My bad. I said it. Watch this. My mic went out. My bad. I got to do that again, though. Smack. Marino was knocked the hell out over there and fumbled. Knocked him out cold, man. Watch him get up. I don't know if they're going to show him get up. They ain't show him get up. But he was out cold, man. 
He was our coach. I remember those hits. But he, he did that in Green Bay, too. Let me see if I could find the Green Bay footage where he knocked out uh, Finley. No. Yeah, they don't got it. All right, well, you don't see that one, but you seen the one against No Shine, man. Knocked him the hell out, man. Broke broke Emmett's shoulder too. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of that was crazy for me, you know. But uh, like I said, I like what I saw when Zimmer was here. I like Zimmer when he left and went to, went to Cincinnati, and I also like what he did um, in Minnesota. So I don't think he's washed. I think he can still ball, and I think he will continuously show us that he still is that type of coach that has the mentality necessary to get us in position to do things that we don't currently do, which is attack the line of scrimmage and control the line of scrimmage. We haven't been doing that in quite some time. So to have a guy like uh, Zimmer here, who understands how to use his talent, no matter where that talent is. You know, he took guys like Roy, who you say, hey, he, he's one biscuit off of a linebacker, but we need to use him in a way that makes him best because he was our best player at that time, right? You take a guy like him and you create a defense that works for him. That's what he did. When he got DeMarcus Ware, he took a defense, he created a defense that works for those guys. When he got, uh, we had Harrison Smith. You know, like Harrison Smith is not a traditional safety that's great, uh over the top but he's good everywhere else so how do we use him put him at the line of scrimmage let him be multiple and harrison smith had his best years under zimmer uh, a guy like anthony barr tighten the hips not super fast more of, he's a pass rusher he's more of a sam linebacker in a league that doesn't have sams how do we use that guy who wants to attack the line of scrimmage while at the same time creating situations where he can cover even though he's nowhere near hendrix in coverage how do we use him you got a guy like hendrix that's undersized we put him next to a bar how do we use Hendricks where he is attacking rather than getting attacked because he's undersized? You have him attacking the line of scrimmage, aligning up in the A gap and doing things that make offenses have to adjust to what he's doing rather than being able to just line up and attack him play after play after play. These guys play well because of what Zimmer was able to do schematically. So for those who wanted to get a quick look at it, I probably will look at uh, Zimmer again, but uh, I'm going to move on and look at another coach probably later on today or tomorrow i got some more film to do but appreciate you guys watching everybody who gave super chats like i said uh oh, hold on i got one more super chat actually uh where are those uh running plays for mccarthy <laughs> mccarthy ain't run he, he ain't run no he don't run those no more man we don't got the same scheme though but um appreciate the super chat but for those guys who are out here like are supporting make sure you guys go like i said go flood uh law nation make sure you wish him a happy birthday i'm doing what i'm doing because i'm appreciating for that and I appreciate y'all for watching. I'll be on a little later. Peace.